Hello and welcome to another episode of the GCSE Maths Question of the Week with me, Mr Barton, where every week I try to pick out a lovely question that has been created for my Diagnostic Questions website that hopefully will help you prepare as best you can for the demands of this wonderful GCSE exam that you're sitting. Now, I always pick questions which have uh, been shown to be causing students problems on diagnostic questions, and we try to get to the bottom of why. And this question is no example. It's a lovely question provided by AQA, and it goes something like this. Two numbers are written as the product of their prime factors as shown. So we've got two to the power of three, three squared times five, two to the power of four times three times seven. Which of these is the highest common factor of the two numbers? Now, hopefully a lot of that lingo is familiar to you. Product of prime factors, we've seen that before. Prime numbers, product, fine. Highest common factor, yeah, that's always been in the GCSE, not a problem at all. So you might be tempted to kind of relax a little bit and think, oh, this is fine, it's just one of those factors questions. And your instinct might be to actually work out what these two numbers are. So to start doing two times two times two times three times three times five, and then do that for this number, and then try and list all the factors out and find the highest one they've got in common. Pretty soon you're gonna be knackered because these are flipping big numbers and it's gonna take you all day to work it out. Fortunately, there is a better way, and it's a way that you really do need to learn for this new GCSE. So I'm gonna teach it you now, okay, just in case you don't know it. Best thing to do, let's call this number A, let's go for, and let's call this lovely little number, number B. So let me start with number A. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna list it, list out the product of its prime factors, but not in index form. So I'm just gonna write them out as normal. So I'm gonna say we've got a two times a two times a two. That's my two to the power of three. Then we've got three squared, so three times three, and then we've got a five on the end. All right, nice. Now let's take number B, and let's do exactly the same with him or her. 2 times 2 times 2 times another 2, then we've just got a 3, then we've got a 7. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw myself a lovely, I say lovely, it will be lovely if I could draw it neat, a lovely Venn diagram. I'll tell you what, that's not the worst thing I've ever drawn, that's not too bad. Okay, and I'm going to label this side of the Venn diagram number A, and I'm going to label this side of the Venn diagram number B. Okay, and I'm gonna simply sort the prime factors of these numbers into this Venn diagram. So any number that they share, anything that they've got in common is gonna go in the center. So can you see A's got a two and B's got a two. So I can save myself time by just putting that two in the center and then it's within the A circle and it's within the B circle, so it's fine. Let's do the same with this. So that's got a two there and a two there. Let's put that in the center. So can you see now A's got two and a two that's in the A circle. B's also got two and a two, that's in the B circle. That two and that two, done. Now, A's got a three and B's got a three, so that's fine there. A's got another three, but there's no other three to pair it up with. A's got a five, nothing to pair it up with, so that's it done and dusted. So this three here is gonna have to sit just in the A circle, and that five there is gonna have to sit just in the A circle. This two here, I've nothing to pair it up with from A, so it's gonna sit in the B circle, and that's seven there. Now, if you do this technique, before you do anything else, just check you've got all your numbers. So in A, I should have one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. And indeed, I've got one, two in just the A circle, three, four, five, six in the intersection, good. B, I should have one, two, three, four, five, six numbers. I've got four in the intersection, and two just in the B, so it's looking good. Now, how do the flipping act does this help me work out my highest common factor? Well, here's the good news. Your highest common factor is simply the product of those numbers in the intersection. So two times two times two times three is gonna give you your highest common factor. Now, don't mess this bit up. Two times two is four times another two is eight times another three is gonna be equal to 24. So I'm going for my highest common factor, 24. And notice at no point did I need to deal with a big number or anything like that, I just used a Venn diagram sorting technique. You know what I'm gonna say now though, right? You've only had half the fun here. Where do these wrong answers come from? So where would an answer of 18 come from? Well, 
A couple of theories here. Well, one, one, <laughs> one really. I reckon 18 comes from, and it's unlucky this, you get down to this bit, and then you flip it, mess it up. You say two times two times two is six. And then do six times three equals 18. And then you absolutely hate yourself for the rest of your life because you've done all the hard work, but you've just messed it up that last bit at the end. Okay. What about 144? Well, I reckon 144 comes from, if you can't be bothered doing your Venn diagrams and you just look at this index notation and say, wow, what have they got in common? Well, this one here, all right, so he's he's got two and he's got two, two to the power of four. So let's take two to the power of four because that's, that's kind of the largest power um, between them. And then that's got a three squared and that's got a three. So let's take a three squared. If you times those together, you get 144. But of course, two to the power of four isn't common to both of them. A's only got two to the power of three and three to the power of two isn't common to both of them. Um, B's only got one three in there. So you can't do that. And likewise, six. Six is a little bit unlucky because six is a factor. It's just not the highest common factor. I reckon six comes from just glancing at this and saying, all right, okay, so what have they got in common? Well, they've both got a two in there, so let's take a two. And they've both got a three in there, so let's take a three. Two times three is six. But of course, it's not quite right because you can have more twos in common. They've got a two times two times two in common and they've got an extra three in common as well. So as I say, this Venn diagram sorting technique really helps you get to the bottom of these ones. You know what I'm going to say now as well? I always like to chuck you in a little bonus wrong answer. So what else could you go for? What other answer could come up whilst answering this question? Well, what about somewhere like this? Three times five times two times two, times two, times three, times two, times seven. I mean, that looks daft, right? But what, what is that? Well, it's all the numbers multiplied together, but it's something else. That is how you work out your lowest common multiple using a Venn diagram. So if students have learned this technique, but then muddle up at the last minute, how do I get my highest common factor and how do I get my lowest common multiple out? You could well end up with that as an answer. Okay, so if you want to practice factors and multiples, please do try the rest of this quiz out. It's a beautiful quiz. And then if you want any extra help, I've got worksheets, videos, all that kind of stuff on my website. And I shall see you for a fresh question of the week next week. Take care. Bye for now.